Hey, sneaky and expected today. Today we're back with Tiny Core 3.3 release the other day, and mighty fun it is too. I've been playing with the release candidates, and they were pretty cool too, you know, it's alright. So anyway, I've installed it with a persistent save file this time, it's a bit different. So if I click on exit, you'll see what I mean. It backs up all my stuff to TCE on HDA1, so that's pretty nice, so you know, you don't lose everything every time you do it. You've got your apps auditor here, now basically you've got file up there, blah de blah bloody blah and bloody blah. But if we go to my on boot items, no, back that way, back the other way, don't be silly. And go to maintenance. Hang on a minute, click maintenance again. It's very quick by the way. And you'll see all the stuff I've installed that's on available on demand. Basically as soon as you boot it's ready to use. Other times you should just keep it in the background and get it to run whenever you feel like it. But I've got it on boot all the time. Now it don't always work correctly, but it's alright. You know, it's alright. Yeah. It's all right. Anyway, what else we got? If we go back down, we've also got a file manager this time. Wow, super duper. So you can actually go through your files and check out what's on there, you know, because normally you couldn't, you'd have to go deep and delve or, in, or download one from the repositories. So there's my TCE stuff, look, not the right one there. But if I go to optional, here's all my stuff, look. As you can see, I've got Chromium in there and all that. I've got Deja Vu fonts I downloaded, etc., etc., etc. You can add all these and all that, whatever you we do what you like, you know what I mean? So we go down to panel. Now we've got some different stuff here. Now you've got backup and restore, which I've shown you already. So if I click that, that's where it's all backing up to when I shut down or restart, okay? So get rid of that. Next we've got date and time. That was, that's been here for a long time, but yeah, works perfectly. Normally works out of the box. I won't go to network because it works out of the box. No point in doing it. But WF bar config or W bar config. Now I'll move this over here and you'll see what I mean. Now it's all the stuff I've got in my bar. I can also move that to the top now. So if I click on top and apply, there we go, that's at the top. I actually prefer it on the top, but the trouble is the box is always going to the top. But you can configure them to open in different ways if you so choose. We've got a floppy tool, a mouse tool, and a mouse tool. I'll open the mouse tool. Just how quick you want your mouse to be, really, and if you're right or left-handed. So we come out of them. We've also got system stats, which is here. I can see my big home files is on for Chromium, really. Big, big, big ones. Then you've got installed. I'll we'll click there. That's all stuff that's installed, etc., etc. Quite a lot there when you think about it. Then on boot stuff, there's the boot sequence. There's the file system. If you look really carefully, you'll see that I've got a 3.9 gig hard drive here, which I'm basically saving everything to. So I've got a nice big file. So I ideally go on a, on a USB stick, but I'll show you that bit in a minute if you just hang on a goddamn moment. All right. So you've got my processors there and my CPU. As you can see, it's the same old test machine. It's only a dual core 2 gig machine. It don't really run at 2 gig, let's be honest, does it? Bleeding old, 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 old. Okay, wallpaper. You can download more wallpapers or install your own if you want, and you put them in the wallpaper file. Or, on the other hand, you can change the colour. So we just click on somewhere that you want the colour for. So we say like a bit of mauve like there. All you do is click OK. There we go. OK, we are clicked. It's all right if you're a girl in it, I suppose. Not really a man's colour, is it? So we'll go back to colour. And we'll go back to a bit of a blue. And we we'll click OK. Oh, that's better. Oh, yes. That's better to the eye. So you've also got a hardest USB installation section here. Now, basically, at the end of the day, if you want to install it to a pen drive, you go here. Now, all depending on how old your machine is, because really old machines have trouble booting from USB drives, don't they? So if you've got a really old one, you want to do it on the zip section down the bottom, where it creates two folders. But if you read through it, it is really easy to make a, a USB file for this. It's really, really easy. But yeah, have a look, see what you think. But the newer machine, the better, really, for USB. You've also got hybrid mode, which I'm actually running in now, basically. It's basically saying, well, you want to file it to a directory or a file. I'm actually doing it to a f directory this time, for a change. Terminal server, I've never used that. Swap file, I've already created a swap file. Exvessor, right, to do your screen resolution, you just click Exvessor, go down, find the size you want, put in a number, and bish bosh, bobs your uncle, we're done. Now, wasn't that nice and easy? It was, yeah, of course it was. So, next we'll go to apps, okay? We're going to click on apps. Now, to get any apps, as you know, you have to go to their own repos. Now, as you can see, you click connect up here. And there we go. There's thousands and thousands of apps. Now, bear in mind, they will not be all GUI. Some will be command line only. So be careful what you saw. So, yeah, be very careful. But we're going to find them quickly to have a look at. Abbey Word. I've not actually installed it yet. So we're going to do that. It's going to go to my HDA1 optional section. I'll click on Go. 
and basically it just starts downloading everything we need for the basic Abbey word okay so this is a bit where we just wait and wait and wait and wait even though my net's really quick now I still have to bleed and wait I don't like waiting when we're we gonna get fiber optic that's what I want to know I think we're halfway through now ah, here we go we're nearly at the end we're downloading Abbey word the main file It'll be about another couple of seconds and we should be fine we're done yellow installed I like okay we'll close that down now as you see on my W bar my widget bar Abbey word is here I click on it up it comes now what sort of Abbey word have we got so if I go to save as and see what file types to support him right it's not really enough for me to use it really if you're going to use it as a system and use the files on Windows as well so what you really want to do is you close Abbey word down we go back to our app section and we go to connect again and once we open it, you will see along the way, we've got Abbey Word plugins. Now this has all the extra plugins that we need to save to different formats and files and Wikipedias and stuff like this. So as you can see now, it's downloading. It doesn't take long at all. It's done already. Look at that. Nice and quick. So we'll close that down. Start Abbey Word up once more. So that's one click on Abbey Word. We'll go up to File again. Then straight down to Save As. And what files we've got this time? Now that's better, isn't it? Look. You can go to Docs, Apple stuff, news groups, Myth files. Myth files? What's a Myth file? Yeah. All right. But yes, you've got more formats and it supports more stuff and you can have more links in, etc., etc., etc. Basically, you can do more stuff. You also get a mount tool this time in the widget bar. So as you can see, my HD1 is already mounted. HDC is not. We don't turn that on much, really, do we? No. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Audacity, as you can see, I've installed just to make sure they all work. Audacity works super fine, super. Look. It's all there. Bearing in mind, I have got to set up my Pulse Audio section because I haven't actually done that yet, but I will do. But I've been using Tiny Core on for a long, long time now, and I really do like it. So, Chromium I've put in as my browser. There you go, nice and quick, really. That's super duper nice, isn't it? Move it along. It's what you would expect Chromium to be, really. You can also get all your themes as you would in a Google Chrome. It's all now compatible with that. So if we scroll down. I think the only thing I ain't actually compatible with is Chrome TV just yet on this development build. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that one though. But give it a try, it might work. So I'm going to do a bit of a theme from, from the gallery here. That's one from the gossip down here. We're just going to apply the theme just to show you that it actually works in Chromium. Apply theme. Save there, yeah. Save in Tiny Core. You know it. You know it. You know it. So it's loading. It's loading. And apparently that's my theme now. I don't look too much different personally. But hey, what do I know? So anyway, we'll just go there. Just for instance, ah, that's the theme, is it? Dark blue and some pictures with people with blue hair. Well, I don't think I'll be keeping that one somehow. Although I don't mind the gossip, on the other hand. They're all right. So yeah, it's tabbed as well, as you know. I don't have to tell you much about it. It's been around for a long time there, Chromium. You know, it's been around. Transmission, couldn't get to work. Didn't want to work, so I'm obviously missing some dependency there. So what I'll have to do is go back to the App Center go down there and make sure one I'm missing and then download it. Now TrueCrypt on the other hand does work, just let me close that mount tool. TrueCrypt works fine, has done for a long time in TinyCore so that's a no worry one. Right, the music player which is LX Music I couldn't get to work even though it's based on XMMS music player but hey never mind, no big deal is it. But obviously I'm missing another couple of dependencies there which I'll have to recheck. VLC, now as you know it will work and does play your DVDs. Bearing in mind you're going to have to install OSS or ELSA or Pulse Audio first. Go through the instructions to make sure it all works. Gimpy is just a standard Gimpy on this one, so no biggie, you know, no biggie really. I'm just making sure it works for you. It won't be too long, look. It's pretty good, okay, yeah, it's alright. Bearing in mind you've got this on a really old machine, it'll take a couple of minutes, you can go to the toilet and get yourself a drinky, can't you? Or something like that. But yeah, there we go, look, works alright. Now it's not the full GIMP that I had installed the other day on uh, Ubuntu, but it will do the job, and plus it's half the download, so there you go, can't have it all, can you? XMS Music Player, yes, I love it, it's a pity it's so bloody small, really, you, know, you can't make it any bigger, which is a pity, but it does work and does the business. You shouldn't have to get any of your MP3 codecs, but if you do have to get them, they are in the app centre up the road there. And that's basically it, really, so we're going to have to connect anyway, just to show you a couple more things. I'm going to scroll down. Now you can see you've got air crack in here. <clears throat> you've got all lots and lots of other stuff that will only work in command line. So don't forget that if you want them to run, you have to open up a terminal to get them to run. 
But just to show you that it does work, or you can download them, if you click on Aircrack, it's a 1.2 megabyte download just for testing your wireless networks. Remember, you're only testing your own home wireless networks because that's what I do. I just test my own. I don't test anybody else's unless they give me specific instructions to do so in writing. Otherwise, you're going to get yourself into big, big, big trouble. Plus, it's command line. There is a UI one somewhere along the line, but I can't remember. I'll see it. It's in some repo somewhere. So anyway, you would have to open up the terminal to use that. So if we scroll down here, if you go to applications, you will see it's not in that bit there. It, if you have to restart it, open up terminal, and run the program from there. And as you know, it's text-based anyway, so no biggie dilly really. Now, TinyCore 3.3, I'm going to give 5 today because I really like it, so I'm a bit biased anyway. And plus, you can just run it off a little tiny drive, and it works really quickly. It does anything you want to, really. So that's pretty good. Sneaky Linux out. See you later.